And we're talking about the spiritual journey of my guest, Matthew P. John. He's got a great book, The Wise Men and the Unknown God. This is a great book. Uh, I think it's an excellent resource. You want to learn a little bit about some of the world religions which Matthew has gone through. I would encourage you again to get this wonderful book, The Wise Men and the Unknown God. So before I went to the break, you have this encounter with, with God. Tell me what happened. Well, uh, this was uh, when I was the second semester um, engineering college student. This was back in India. I had to go through a particular personal episode. It's too much to describe, but let's say it was a very poignant uh, experience of suffering in my life. Uh, and uh, at that time, you know, I was reading uh, the Bible. Um, uh, very rarely I used to do that at the time. And wh while I was reading uh, that particular scripture um, of the crucifixion in which Jesus cries out on the cross, I thirst. Um, I had a, for the lack of better words to say, a transcendent experience. I kind of heard that word, I thirst, in that room, kind of reverberating uh, all over the room. It kind of, sometimes, you know, when the scripture comes alive, yep. it literally does. Um, and so, so that really was the start of me um, trying to know that God is, like I said, bigger than this uh, vague concept and I can relate to him. And particularly as evangelicals, we have this terminology of having a personal relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. which is a very beautiful thing, which is something which the Eastern people don't understand, you know, relationship with God. Um, uh, it's sort of romantic in, in some ways too, and that's uh, what actually fascinated me and went on a spiritual quest. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. in India, where you've got uh, you know thirty, uh, you know, three hundred and thirty million gods or something. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> I mean, to say, hey, I've got this personal relationship with Jesus. Did you, you know, what was the impact? Uh, you know, your family and how were you received when you? I mean, again, coming from a nominal Christian home, I guess. Yes. But when you really talk about this personal relationship. Yeah. Um, not so much with my family, but in general, as I relate to people of different world religions, and that could be uh, an aha moment, you know, uh, for people to say personal relationship. Um, but having said that, I have seen uh, in all world religions, there is this element of a personal God trying to connect with the devotees. And there is this yearning of God in all religions I have studied to enter into a personal relationship with human beings, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in the Eastern religions. For example, in Hinduism, this whole concept of avatar, you know, it's a very famous movie. Yeah, you yeah know? the term is now very well known. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it's not the coming in, right? That's right. And what not so many people you know, not so many people know the fact that the word avatar comes from the theological vocabulary of Hinduism. And it means that God coming down as a human being in God enters the world, right? And so because God has a quest, God has a thirst to be among the humanity and connect with humanity. And, but Jesus is the only historical manifestation of that thirst. Uh, in, in another word, I mean, the, the whole uh, turning point for me in my journey was reading C.S. Lewis. And obviously, C.S. Lewis is much talked about in the Western world, more, in, more so in terms of his response to reason, evidence, mm -hmm. and mere Christianity. But we don't, not a lot of people know that he has done extensive research in world religions. And uh, C.S. Lewis described G, uh, Christianity as a true myth, I really like that because uh, according to him, Christianity is a myth which became a fact. So there was this uh, yearning in all religions and all cultures, and we will call it, you know, the psychologists would call it what they call the archetypes of the collective unconscious, mm. which is this Jungian uh, psychology. And that means there is this uh, primordial, or fundamental instinctual uh, patterns of thoughts embedded in all the human culture. Whether you are a Hindu or a Christian, everybody has that mythical archetypes, uh, you know, ingrained in their culture. And, and C.S. Lewis described Jesus as the culmination of that mythical archetype, which is what I'm trying to do in my book too, to say, <laughs> 
Well, yeah, I think yes, you just, yes. you've just wet our appetite. And some are going, okay. what was he saying? <laughs> Personal relationship with God is possible. And if you, as you've looked at things, you said that that is found in the person of Jesus Christ. If you've not experienced that personal relationship with Jesus, and uh, I, I would encourage you to call our prayer lines, 1-866-273-4444. Matthew, thank you for this book. This is great. Uh, use some fiction to tell some stories, uh, and you can see Jesus in the different uh, world religions. Uh, and again, uh, this is one of those resource books. So thank you for writing it, and thank you for oh. being on the program. Oh, thank you. It was good it's seeing you again. Well, good yeah, and a, and, a, and a graduate of the Broadcasting School here at Crossroads. Keep up the great sure. work you're doing. Thank you. And we'll have more of 100 Huntley Street right after this.